Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Matt from Friar Pod and Into the Friar Ramblings from the Kitchen Podcast. Doing something a little different today. I'm going to interview someone one on one. And uh, this guy is a pretty creative dude. I've known him for a long time. And I want to introduce him. This is Matt Hewitt from FriarPod.com and Into the Fire ramblings from the kitchen. Matt, what is up? Oh, dude, thank you for having me. It's uh, totally my pleasure to be here. Um, I'm glad to get the opportunity to have this conversation with you and uh, and uh, just have some fun with everybody. Question for you. You know, I've followed your story on why you started the podcast and then the website and all that kind of stuff and can you tell everybody you know that may be watching what uh what it was that made you want to get started well um you know i i uh when i was working in the kitchen i let me back up I've, I've always been, you know, a creative person. And uh, when I was young, I did creative writing classes, art classes in high school and junior high. Um, I had a, you know, I was, I, what I would think was, had a little bit of talent. Um, and it was always something that I enjoyed doing. Um, and then as I got older, I started to, uh, I started working in kitchens when I was like, 18, 19 years old, um, and kind of found that, um, you know, I did a bunch of odd, you know, odd jobs, but once I made that transition into kitchen work full time, um, I found that a lot of my creative energy, in fact, probably a hundred percent of my creative energy went into, into, uh, culinary, you know, and creating food. Um, now that I'm not doing that full time or at all, uh, I'm in sales now. Um, I still work with chefs. I still get to talk to chefs. I'm still involved in the food industry, but, uh, that creative desire it was still there. So, um, what I wanted to do was I wanted to find an outlet of how could I, do something creative, stay involved with food, and that's kind of how I came up with the idea for the podcast. And the writing portion of it, um, I'd, I've always written. I've always been a writer, whether it's poetry or just, you know, I, I ran a blog for a little while a number of years ago, maybe seven or eight years ago, uh, briefly. Um, but I've always, uh, enjoyed writing, um, and being able to just kind of have a conscious, uh, stream of thought consciousness where it's uninterrupted and I can just kind of write what, what comes to mind. That's awesome. That is just awesome. And when you talk about that, um, how did, I, I mean, you spent so many years in the kitchen. What was it that you felt was important to tell stories of chefs and people in the restaurant and food industry? Well, um, you know, it's funny, I thought that it would be interesting, you know, I think of like one of the books that I read that was influential in my career was Kitchen Confidential and, and I, I really enjoyed Anthony Bourdain, um, his writing, his, his style of storytelling. And then I thought to myself, well, there's tons of celebrity chefs out there, but there's also so many people that are, are freaking grinders that just 
show up and, and like they are the ones that are running your neighborhood eatery, uh, the place that you love around the corner from your house, that no one's gonna tell their story. Maybe, you know, by happenstance, they'll get on diners, drive-ins and dives or, you know, uh, some other food program. Um, but there's tons of people out there that, that make food happen on a daily basis that are interesting and intriguing people. And I've been doing the podcast for about a year. So I did maybe eight or nine episodes, maybe 10 episodes before I started interviewing chefs. And um, I've also interviewed a, a good friend of mine that used to be in the, involved in the restaurant industry that's, that's now a, a, a pattern coach. Um, pattern, you know, she would be, for people that don't understand, would be kind of a life coach. Um, but she's a creative person. Um, she spent a number of years uh, in the food and, and bar industry and she had some great stories. And then just, you know, I, I've started to reach out beyond people that I know, um, people that, are here in the Salt Lake area where I live now, um, reached out to some friends um, that kind of helped me get get going and helped me get my chops on the interview process. But it really comes down to wanting to tell the stories of people that might not otherwise get their stories told. And if you were going to um, if you were going to give any advice to people that may feel like starting a podcast or a YouTube page or, you know, any other type of, of creative endeavor, what would you say? Um, do I have any advice for people out there? Yeah. Um, just get started. If, if you want, if you, the, the, what I would say is that if, and I'll talk right to you, but if, if you think that you want to do something creative or you want to get your name out there or you have an idea, the best advice that I can give is to just go for it. Just make mistakes. The faster you make mistakes and the faster you fail, the faster you're going to get to uh, a success. Um, it took me a while. I did some research. I found, I found um, what I wanted to do the podcast. I wanted to find a way where I could, could I didn't have to invest greatly and heavily um, in it. For the sole fact of, I've made some mistakes in starting businesses in the past where uh, I, I started a, a company. Um, head chef hats and I, we made hats and, and, uh, I paid for the artwork. I paid for the design, all that kind of stuff. And then I bought a bunch of inventory and I lost my ass on it. So I, I you know, I wanted to figure out a way to do a podcast where I didn't have to have a lot of little to zero, um, cash outflow. And I was able to find a anchor app or anchor.fm if you're if you're working on your laptop or something and it was it's still is 100% free I still post all of my I, I do a lot of my editing um, before I load it into anchor now on the podcast um, at, but I've, I've I found some editing audio editing software that was free audacity is something that I use um, and now you know I uh, edit some of my videos. I do it on iMovie, the app on my iPhone. Super simple. There's just certain things that you can do to um, make the any outlay of cash uh, minimal or zero. And then as I progressed, I realized, well, I think I'm going to be doing this for a while. Um, and that I started to kind of slowly, like I bought a, I, I bought a little tripod with a, with a microphone, you know, that, that, uh, uh, a shotgun mic where, because I want to start doing, I wanted to start doing video. I wanted to start getting better audio quality. I invested in a small USB microphone. I learned about, uh, being able to record through my computer, uh, via zoom, um, the, the web, uh, conferencing app and just started to 
do a little bit more investigation and, and but the, the best advice that I can give is to just go out there and, and try it and see if you like it. And you know, if you have an idea, don't wait for the perfect moment because if you wait for the perfect moment, you're gonna be waiting all your life. Did that answer your question? <laughs> um, oh, I love that, I love that. What are your plans for the future uh, with either the podcast or um, the website and the things that you're doing on friarpod.com? What are my plans for the future? That's a good question. Well, uh, right now I'm working, I started work on a documentary called The American Food Project. Um, my plan is to continue to try and build an audience with the podcast, um, I'm I'm learning uh, I'm learning about video editing, sound editing, um, all these things, and, and I I don't know exactly where this is going to take me. Where do I want it to take me? I, I hope that um, I'll tell you about the 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 documentary, but I hope that um, people will start to take me seriously uh, as a content creator and a creator uh, in general. Um, perhaps I get good enough at editing that um, it leads me somewhere that I never imagined. Um, but I, I, so the near future is to produce this documentary. And I still haven't decided whether it's going to be um, a, a, a docu-series or if it's going to be like a documentary film but over the obviously since I was a kid and um, obviously you know this but uh, since I was a kid every presidential election ha there's been a lot about immigration and and with our current administration um, there's still there there's you know been all kinds of shit going on with immigration and one of the things that is near and dear to me are the people that i worked with throughout my career um you know i spent almost 25 years in the kitchen before i started uh this this new career in sales and even now i still come into contact with with tons and tons of people that came to this country uh, as immigrants, whether whether illegally or legally, um, but the people that I've got to know throughout my time in in the restaurant industry um, are just some of the greatest people that I've ever met, and I don't think um, I I know that if we um, tried to stop immigration in our country that uh, food industry, agriculture, restaurants, uh, you name it, um, it, it, would, it would throw our economy, it would set our economy back some and it would, it would probably turn things on, their, on its ear a little bit. And so what I want to do with this documentary called, and the name of it is The American Food Project, um, obviously it's a, it's a little bit of a pun or a double entendre because so many times in the, in the in the restaurant industry the whether you're eating french or italian or mexican or american what you know like what what is american food it's it's food that you know it's kind of like a melting pot there i i i didn't study enough i didn't go to culinary school to study like what is american food but a pot roast i mean that came over from england um and probably every other culture has the same kind of dish, uh, you know, in its repertoire of some sort. Um, but the American food to me is the people. It's it's the it's the dishwashers. It's the prep cooks. It's the line cooks. It's the people that that bust their ass day in and day out in harsh conditions most of the time. Um, to get, to prepare something that we get to go out 
or people get to go out to restaurants and, and consume. And, and most of the time, um, if you're eating in a French restaurant, the chef's not going to be a French guy. It might be an American guy or could be a Mexican guy. It could be a Latin American person or woman. You know, it doesn't matter. But, but so often we, we don't associate the... Um, we so often don't associate the food with the people that that are preparing it behind the scenes. We associate it with, with the chef, the person that's in the front in the white coat um, that comes to your table and has a conversation with you. And, and uh, so th for the near future, it's, it's to work on this documentary. Um, I'm still, I, I've been having a hard time with the stuff that I'm learning and doing and trying to figure out things with, with video editing and all that. Um, I've been focusing a lot on doing short um, Instagram videos on IGTV, so I haven't, uh, I've kind of slacked off a little bit on the podcast, but once I start to, uh, I'm, I'm just about over a hump where things will start to get easier and then I'll get back into a better flow, but, but for the near future, it's gonna be concentration on this, on this documentary. Oh, that's awesome. Do you ever plan on uh, on getting back into the kitchen? I never say never when it comes to getting back into the kitchen. Um, I love what I'm doing right now. I'm having a great time. It allows me the freedom to... to, to um, work on these other projects and these other creative endeavors. But most importantly is it gives me time with, with my family. Um, I have, you know, a, a six year old son, um, and a three year old daughter and, and, you know, working in restaurants is not conducive to family life for the most part. Uh, and the way that I did restaurants and the way that I did kitchens, um, I just kind of pushed everything else aside and I became singular in that focus and, and it was really hard. Um, I felt like I was missing out on a lot. You know, there was times when I'd leave for work before everyone in my family got up. You know, my wife and two kids were asleep and then I'd come home um, at night and they'd be asleep, you know, and, and uh, so, for the time being, I don't see myself making any changes, but I never say never. That that would be foolish to do. And if there's one final thought that you had for uh, the people out there that may be watching this video, um, what would you like to tell them? Any final thoughts? Yeah, um, you know, I just, if anyone's watching out there and you feel like um, you have a story to tell or you feel like you want to try something, try it. I mean, we're in a day and age where, uh, you know, you have, I, I'm finding out that is if I want to work hard enough or I want to look for something, if I want to do the research, if I want to, you know, take a look at something uh, and learn something, you have freaking Google, you have YouTube, the two biggest search engines in the world. YouTube is, a, is, is awesome because I'm a visual learner and so I can, I can look up things to learn, but you, you just have to be willing to, to make mistakes. You have to be willing to uh, be open and learn. Um, and, and, and you have to just be willing to, you know, get uncomfortable, you know, get out of your comfort zone. Um, and, and maybe it might not be a podcast. It might not be a blog. It might not, maybe it's, you wanted to start a, a baking business or you want to sell freaking, you know, handmade tchotchkes or whatever. Like it doesn't matter. Just, just go for it. Um, there's some people that I've kind of watched, um, you know, I, I'm sure there's plenty of people that have heard of Gary Vaynerchuk. 
uh, guy started, he was the wine guy, um, started this, you know, he helped build his dad's wine company and then now he's considered kind of a, uh, internet marketing genius, guru, whatever you want to call him. Um, you know, if you see any of his stuff on Twitter or Instagram or wherever, um, he, he's basically saying like, you know, the world is at your fingertips. You have to be patient and work hard and like not expect that it's going to be happening overnight. And, and that's how it is for me. Like, so my advice would be like, just be patient know that you're going to make mistakes um, and and uh, keep going for it don't um, you know like I, I'm not I'm not quitting my job I'm not um, out there you know saying like I've, I, I'm a fool to think that I'm gonna be like doing this for a living but sometimes I'm a fool so maybe I will be doing it for a living um, maybe CNN will call me um, after I start to put out some of the episodes of my documentary um, that would that would be awesome but but my advice or my closing words is is just go for it have fun don't do it for the followers don't do it for you know for fame and fortune and whatever like why I started, um, was because I wanted to tell the stories of people that, that wasn't, weren't getting told. I wanted to tell those stories. What I found is that I love the connection that happens between people having a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, um, talking, you know, whether it's talking via, via Zoom or Skype or on the phone, um, or face-to-face -face doing an interview. There, there, that is what drives me, that getting you know when when uh, I filmed that first interview for the American Food Project, um, it it I went back and watched some of the footage and like there was a couple times where I I almost came to tears and I got goosebumps because of the story that I was just being able to to hear and help tell. Um, those are the things that you should do it for. Do it. For, if I ever thought that I was going to make a penny um, as a podcaster or uh, doing what I'm doing, I, yeah, I never, never think that I'm going to make a penny. Um, but it doesn't, gonna, it's not going to stop me from, from putting it out and doing something uh, because I love, I love what I've found. So yeah, find something that you love and, and do it for fun and for free. That's about all I got. Peace.